Um, thank you all for, for the opportunity to be here. Um, I'm Eric Beta, and uh, currently I'm finishing up my MBA here. Uh, and so this is the, uh, as I said, the last stretch, the last project. Uh, and so once this is complete, um, I will be uh, in, the, in the promised land. So, <laughs> so um, again, uh, thank you all for being here. I'd like to thank my professor um, as well as uh, just advisor for the entire project, uh, Dr. Uh, Ina Mortor. It's just uh, being very supportive and just her guidance throughout the whole process has been uh, very tremendous. I uh, really just made it feel uh, easy, you know, showing and sharing the different opportunity that can arise for from projects like this. So um, my project is based on um, supporting first generation college students at a Christian institution. Um, and so it's a, to me, it's, a, it's very dear to my heart uh, because uh, myself, I'm a first generation college student. Uh, how many first generation students do we have here? So we have one, uh, two, okay. Um, so as a first generation college student, I really had a, a mind to to dig more deeper into it, to find out what is going on and what makes uh, this population so interesting, especially on a, on a Christian campus. Uh, there's quite a bit of research out there dealing with first gen. Uh, I'll use the term first gen quite a bit, but that means first generation college students for short. Uh, first gen on a, uh, in public sector, public universities, uh, it's, it's a lot of research going on about that particular population. but. Dealing with them on a Christian campus, there's not uh, enough research out there dealing with them. So, and so the question is, what is a first gen? I want to hear a little bit about their story. Is the house hooked up? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's because it's piped into the house. Uh, is that it? Okay. Can't hurt. Yeah. There is volume. Yeah, that sounds perfect. <laughs> so, um, in dealing with first gener generation college student, what is a first generation college student? What does that person look like? It's very interesting because there are no labels on people's forehead or um, a some sort of a, uh, I guess based on the previous presentation, some sort of cultural, uh, uh, Signif uh, I guess sign, if you will, or a label on a person to say, oh, that's a first gen, or no, that's not a first gen. First gen can look like anyone. They can come from uh, different communities, different backgrounds. Uh, different ways of, there are different ways of defining a first generation college student. A first generation college student, obviously, is a person, uh, based on different definition, is a person whose parents have not obtained, or ha rather have gone to college but necessarily have not obtained a bachelor degree. There are other definitions that states that uh, parent, our students whose parents have only completed just as much as a high school, high school degree. And so you look at that, uh, the difference, a student who maybe parents have not gone to college but just completed a bachelor, a high school degree, and then you look at the difference between that student and a student maybe that has gone, parents have gone to college but not, have not finished their education. And so when you talk about first-generation college student, really 
there's a, there's a latitude of what that means. There's not a complete set definition of what that student looks like. You also have student, and, and, and the idea is that um, these students are not always necessary low-income students as well. And so there's the idea that people think it's, an, it's interchangeable, that the first-generation college student it's aut automatically means that that person is a low-income student. So as we dig more deep into it, obviously the, the research here is, the intent of the research is to figure out uh, and to understand the differences or to explore the need of first-generation college students on our main campus here at Spring Grove University, and also to, uh, uh, to talk about some of the challenges that these students face as they navigate, as they navigate through institutions like Spring Grove University, at, as they try to figure out what that journey looks like for them. And also want to talk about some of the reason why these students easily drop out of college, because um, um, it is very uh, one of the, the major cases for first-generation college students. Um, and also talk about maybe some, uh, some ways that programs that we can put in place to kind of help support these students uh, so that they can also reach those dreams and goals of completing a college education. And so here's uh, the, the, the driving question here. You know, does faculty and staff members recognize the difference between the need, the need of first generation college students and their peers and how the institution respond to the need of this population? And I think it's very pertinent that we understand that there is a difference between these two students. Um, one of the things I found in my research is um, uh, institutions, a uh, Christian institution like Spring Grove University, there is a sense of treating every student the same and giving them all uh, a sense of uh, care and support that um, is aligned across the board. And so in dealing with that, sometimes uh, you tend to miss certain students in the pipeline or in the process. And so, um, in dealing with uh, first generation, generation college students, there is what you call a segment or different groups of at-risk students. Because first generation college students are classified as a group of at-risk students. Uh, there are multiple at-risk students that have been identified out there. Uh, but uh, these are the three that I would like to kind of uh, touch on a little bit. And so in dealing with average students, you have first generation college students, or for my research, I'll say first gen. Um, and then you also have uh, the ethnic minority students, also considered uh, at risk students, according to studies. And then students who are from lower socioeconomics, uh, as well, also considered uh, low income students. And so, I'm sorry, I also consider at-risk students. So when you bring the three combination together, you have obviously the, the area that, uh, that's painted uh, the black color that actually shows that those students are more than any other student on your campus to drop out of college. And so um, I, I guess I call that, I just kind of coin, self-coin that, call that the triple whammy, okay? It's one thing for a student to be a first gen, but also, when you add on the other two components, the student being an ethnic minority student and from a low, lower socioeconomic um, um, community or background, it intensifies their likelihood of not persisting and graduating from college. And so as you look at that, here at Spring Arbor University, um, our first generation college make up about 20% of our student population. Okay. And then the ethnic student, um, minority students represent another 15 to 16% of our student population. Uh, students from lower socioeconomics represent 40% of our student population. And so when you look at that, there's quite a bit of lower socioeconomic students on our campus. And again, as I mentioned earlier, the two does not necessarily overlap. A first gen does not necessarily mean lower socioeconomic students. I have a lot of our students who are first gen because mom and dad have a business, but either parent has ever gone to college. And so the experience of that student on a college campus is very much different than the student who um, may be a first gen and also from a lower socioeconomic and an ethnic minority student. The biases and the different challenges that it brings to a college campus are enormous. 
And so how do we as an institution respond to their need? And how do we differentiate their need? OK. <laughs> how do we differentiate their need from other students or their peers, if you will? And so what I've done, I've tried to expedite to this since I have five minutes. Um, we've interviewed uh, eight participants on our campus, students who, uh, participants who are first-generation college students. Uh, we've had four students from uh, the four classification, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. Uh, we also had um, three member of faculty, members of faculty who we interviewed. Uh, one of the three was actually a first-gen, so getting some uh, different um, perspective from that faculty was very interesting. And then had one staff member who was also a first-generation college student as well. In addition to that, um, because this was a, a, a mixed um, research method, we also uh, did a survey and surveyed 57 students um, and kind of getting their perspective on their experience here at Spring Arbor University as first generation college students. And so it was very interesting, um, the finding, uh, most of the students, it was over 80% of the students said that they wish there was a program on this campus that can help them transition through the institution as first-generation college students. And so obviously some of the challenges with that that we found through the research is how do you identify these students? Because again, as I mentioned earlier, there's no signs on their forehead that said that's the first gen, that's not a first gen. And so how do you differentiate between the two when it comes, through, when it comes to a professor who is trying to uh, serve the need of those students? Um, and so that was one of the th one of the, uh, the the thing that really came out of the research is these students wishing and hoping that there was some some support available for them. And uh, some may feel like well we do have quite a bit of services that we offer to students across the board on this campus, but uh, there are certain services that these students need that sometimes we may not offer that's very pertinent and very important for them. And so the, uh, these are some, some things that we've kind of recommended and, and at least came across. So appropriately introducing first-generation college students to the SAU community by creating effective and timely orientation processes for them. And so what does that look like? I'll touch on that a little bit. Also creating specific program for first-generation college students were some things that came out of the research. And these were some uh, feedback that students expressed throughout the interview process. And then thirdly, building stronger relationship between uh, first-generation college students and faculty and staff members was very critical for, um, for these students. And so what does that mean, introducing these students to college? Obviously, um, as you all know, those have been here for years, we have the uh, NSO, which is something that we do annually. And so how, how does that how does NSO impact first-generation college students, or how does that touch them? How does that contribute to them when they first arrive on our campus? So the need to maybe reevaluate the first-gen, uh, the NSO program, and how it impacts our first-generation college students. Is there a specific component for them? Are there areas that really speaks to them? And also, one of the, the major pieces that came out of uh, the research is the financial aid counseling piece. It was critical. Those students felt that if they had more support, understanding the financial aid process would have made a major difference for them. I remember when I was in uh, college, and that's one of the areas where I really kind of struggled because I didn't really have a parent at home that can help with the process or help navigate me through the process. So I had to kind of figure that out for myself. I had to kind of figure out how to do the whole process, how to, to fill out the form and so on, so on and so forth. And part of the research, talking to students, they said, I wish someone actually took the time to help them because parents did not understand the process because they have not gone to college themselves or have not even completed the process of college. So the, the idea of trying to help your children navigate through that process it, it is difficult for them. So they really, they just leave it up to their kids. And so that was something that came pretty strong across the board for the students. Trying to expedite. So having program that were very, very in intentional um, for these students is very, very important. Um, because again, one of the uh, uh, the discussion with students that came out was, 
I wish there were specific programs for me as a first-generation college student. You know, there's, there's a saying that goes that it's better to prepare for an opportunity and not have the opportunity than to not be prepared and to have the opportunity. And these students feel that they do not, they are not prepared for the opportunity. We all consider college a privilege and opportunity for one to better themselves and to have an opportunity to improve their lot in life. But many of these students feel that they're not prepared for the opportunity. And because they're not prepared for the opportunity, failure is a huge component of their journey. And so persistence is obviously something critical that we as an institution uh, can find ways to work on to help these students persist so that they can complete their college journey. So these are some ideas of programming that we certainly uh, have gathered through the research that will be very, very important for these students to have. Uh, networking with other first generation college students, having uh, strong academic advising services for them will be very, very critical. And I'm kind of closing out here. Building stronger relationship between faculty and student uh, uh, is very important for these students. So obviously faculty, meaning that faculty uh, have to understand who these students are. And understanding these students, meaning that these faculty and staff have to have some training. For the research, much of, a number of the faculty said we never had any training on, them, on how to deal with these students, how to engage these students. As Christians, we know how to engage people in general, but how do you really engage students who you really don't have much connection with as far as their background and the different deficiencies that they may have? And how do you really support them? Um, and I'm pretty much out of, out of time here. I'm trying to kind of expedite. This is my, my last slide, so is that okay? Okay, thank you. So I'm kind of reminded of like the, the, uh, the, um, the great uh, carpenter um, who had the 12, 12 disciples. I'm sure most of us kind of know, know who I'm talking about. Um, he asked a question to his disciples and said, whom do men say that I am? Who do people say that I am? And Peter stood up and said, well, some people say you are Elias or Elijah. Some say you're John the Baptist. Others say you're that prophet or this prophet. And he asked them the question, the people where he spent most of his time with, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And the carpenter said, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my father, which is in heaven. And the reason why this is very important, because he wanted to know the people that I'm spending most of my time with, do they know who I am? And can they, do they understand who I am? And I think it's very critical for us as, uh, as faculty and staff, we need to understand the students who are among us, the students that we're dealing with and, and supporting. If we don't understand who they are, how can we better support them? So it's very, very important to understand who they are where they're coming from. So the training, having training to, so that we can better um, support these, these, stu these students and understand who they are. And also the university providing resources to better identify these students in the beginning for faculty and staff will go a long way. And with that, I conclude my presentation. Any questions? Yes, sir. Intrusive advice. Thank you. As, 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 I'm glad you mentioned that. Intrusive advice and really it goes beyond um, just merely asking questions on the surface. But really, it's almost like a, a level of advice that that may be somewhat uncomfortable, if you will, because you're asking questions that really. You're trying to find out what's really going on inside the person. How's your life? How's family life? How are things at home? You're going beyond how, your, how your grades and how your how classes are doing, how's campus life. But you're actually trying to find out what's happening at home because these students, uh, many of them, uh, according to my research, 80, over 80% of them are so concerned about not being able to help at home and being on campus. And so they're so connected to home because them leaving home, it's like fa the family has lost an extra support that they needed because 
obviously everyone is working to support the family. So by John Doe being on campus, that's the extra person that they've lost to support the family. So the person is so trying to find out what's going on at home. Many times their academics suffer because they're so worried about what's happening at home. And so going beyond the border and really finding out what's happening with the student at home. How, how is the family? And how are your parents? Are they connecting with you? Are they involved? Those type of questions. Yeah. Thank you.